Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Um, we are here to learn, and we're going to have fun doing it. So um, I'm going to want to have this be as interactive as possible. So please uh, feel free to share your comments, your questions. Uh, do not wait to the end. We can, you know, Jen's keeping a close eye on the chat. And so she'll uh, tap me on the virtual shoulder and let me know, hey, we've got a question from, uh, from Germany and, um, and we'll make sure to address that. So we're gonna do a couple things uh, a little bit differently, but I really want to um, kind of eat our own dog food here. And what I mean by that is we're going to uh, show you how to make a game, but I want to start off this session by you actually playing one. So I want you to actually experience what it's like to play a game. And it's just a demo. So it should take you about three, four minutes to play the whole game. If you read each screen, take your time, there's no hurry. And then once we finish, we're going to look at the analytics and then I'm gonna show you how we actually built, how I built the game. Um, and just from a perspective, uh, I am not an instructional designer. Um, I have a very long software development and publishing specifically with educational games. Um, so if I can build this game, given my relatively rudimentary skills when it comes to, uh, I use paint, I use PowerPoint. So if I can build this, you can, and you can do it much better than I did, but uh, give you a sense of how this works. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this link and I'm going to put it, I'm going to stop sharing for just a sec. How do I stop sharing, stop sharing, stop, we go. Okay, I'm going to put this link into the chat. And yes, it does fly like a bird or a banana. All right, so here we go. There is the link. So what I want you to do is click on that link and then it's going to open up a window and you're going to go ahead and uh, register. Just no, you don't need to use your name or email address. It's just gonna be your abbreviation. So uh, keep it clean because we're gonna be looking at the leaderboard together. So just your initials and um, play the game. Like I said, it'll take three, four minutes to, to play it experience. And then we're gonna talk about it and uh, really dissect how I built it, why I built it, and um, we'll be able to uh, hopefully have a very engaging conversation. I don't see a link. I will try again. No link in chat. Okay, what, what? Oh, it's, can I send it to everyone, Jen? Yeah. Everyone, oh, no, here we go. No, 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 user error. Oh, user you error. Did. Yeah, I just sent it to you. <laughs> what do you think of the game, Jen? I know, I know you've already played it. There you go, thank you very much for the heads up. It is now everyone. Everyone have it? Everyone just say yes in the chat. No, you don't have to. And all right. So I'm going to be quiet for three, four minutes, let you guys play the game, and then be back. I'm actually going to, yes, I'm going to show. I'm going to show my screen. I'm going to show the live leaderboard. How exciting. So no one's finished the game yet. But as this is the live leaderboard and I have the live leaderboard on with live refresh, so it pings the servers I don't know, every like I don't know, 10 times a second or something crazy. So as soon as we start seeing people finish, this leaderboard is going to begin populating. That's a funny word, populate. Yeah. Why is that a funny word, Richard? I don't know. It comes out weird. Populate. It's a kind of real <laughs> nasal. Populate. It's like that Fort Lauderdale. Mm. Mm. Loyola. Yeah. Is that right this time? You did. You did. <laughs> yeah, a hard word. <laughs> All right. Let me turn that off. Chat. Oh, thank you, Arthur. What did Arthur say? He said it's a nicely designed game. Oh, well, thank I'm saying you. thank you. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm all thumbs. And for those of you who just joined here, I will paste the link again. We are letting everyone play a game. It's, it's going to be the uh, kind of a the forum around which we're going to have the rest of the webinar. 
and a, a nice way to start a webinar as opposed to just hearing me chat or God forbid using a PowerPoint presentation. Hey, Jen, I'll be right back. Come <laughs> on, <Wait>, Richard. <laughs> Sorry. Did you try refreshing? No, it'll 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 refresh. Refreshes as as, automatically. All right. Yeah, it refreshes automatically as soon as people start finishing. I have, I have painters here, just in case anyone wanted to know. I have a dog who might bark at some point. <laughs> Let's Mike's doing a pretty good job of of uh, blocking out the mm. barking dogs. See how it says um, it pings the server and then says no results. We'll see it refresh here. Eighty-five people. That's great. Thank you all very much for joining us. Hopefully, all eighty-five of you are playing the game right now. And it's funny. This isn't a game we talk about too often. We typically too... talk about Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune and trivia, but this is a great game. I have to tell you, it is the unsung hero of the training arcade. And the kinds of games that you can make in Recall are, in my opinion, some of the most creative ones. And really, at uh, touch on a, a, a need in training for those kinds of roles where you need your team members, your employees to react quickly. You need them to have a, a command of material and time matters, how quickly someone responds to a situation is important and being able to really have the forum for creating that kind of let's say more uh, intense time sensitive experience in a game-based activity is why i love the recall game so in a weird be. way it reminds me of those memory card games that we played as kids i used to love mm, those yeah you know, Slightly. I, I like I like the the competitive aspects though that one has here with. Um, so let's see. So we're coming up here. We've got a lot of people that have now finished the game, and let's see. So we've got a high score. RMB, great job. Um, it was higher score than I ever had. So what we're going to go ahead and do now that let me see how many people have now played. We've got. Go to yeah. all the way at the end. We've got 63 people that have played the game, and go ahead and go ahead and, and uh, move on. For those of you that haven't finished, go ahead and finish the game. But what I wanted to do is take up. I know this this seminar, this webinar is all about building this game, but I wanted to take a moment and look at the analytics, and we get to see here. So we had the leaderboard page, and then we have the analytics associated with the game. That everyone just played and we play this in what we call anonymous mode and we can see that um, uh, if you are using this where you identify each of your employees you'll be able to know exactly uh, who rmb is and what did rmb do well and look at that i gotta say rmb just crushed it at 37 seconds so flying through it and uh and actually played twice so that's fantastic good for you that's really well done one of the things that I love about our analytics is the ability to look at the overall results holistically as a group. So being able to say, uh, for example, if I want to look at accuracy and which of the questions did most of the people get wrong. So there were 74 attempts at what violations do you see in this picture? Select all that you apply. So that was the healthcare. That was that. Sorry, the restaurant. 
where we wanted to look at the health violations. And the interesting thing is that overall accuracy, well, on the first attempt, on the first attempt, fifth, only, only 15% of you got that correct. And those of you that went back and played again, the second time that you played it, you had a 73% accuracy the second time you went back and played the game again. So first attempts, right? This is, obviously, I look at this and this is meaningful. If we were running a restaurant and we had our employees throughout the country playing this game and having to identify what are the health violations and safety violations and 85% of them got it wrong, well, I'm going to, as an, as an instructor, I'm going to drill down and want to make sure that I reach out to all those employees and be able to deliver different ways of driving home that important safety and health message. So being able to have the results individually, very important. Being able to have them at a holistic level, critical, to be able to then identify large group knowledge gaps and then be able to fill those gaps. Uh, we have many QSR restaurants that are using the training arcade and actually do something very interesting, which is they identify their employees by the actual restaurant, the individual restaurants, and they're therefore be able to really, they're able to hone in on restaurants, individual restaurants around the country that might have issues that need to be addressed, as well as be able to have competitions between those restaurants and really provide a carrot for having that particular restaurant do better than others in, if you would, a, a real competitive learning environment. So before we move from the analytics to how I built this demo, I'm gonna stop, ask who has any questions that we, that we wanna address in a timely fashion right now. So I'm gonna stop sharing so I can look at the chat. Yeah, there are uh, no Q&A panel, but. Oh, feel... okay, that's fine. No, does anybody have any questions right now on either what you played or on the analytics at this point? Okay, all right, let's go back and show you how I built the game. So how many of, how many of you out there in the world right now already have a subscription to the training arcade. I just want to gaze, gain uh, a sense of the audience and how many of, and, and, and how many of you already have built a recall game? I'm getting a couple thumbs up. All right. All right. Um, for the person that has already built the recall, yeah, well, actually, we'll come back. We'll come back. Um, so let's just, how do, how do you build? So this is, this is the, this is the analytics and let's go in and dive in and, and look, actually look at the game itself. So this is the game that you all just played. So as uh, for those of you that are new to the training arcade, there are four overarching steps that you have to take in building a recall game as you do all of the 10 games in the training arcade. So you have to populate the game information tab and we'll dive into this. I just want, this is everything that is general about the game itself. And then you have the questions. And in the recall game, we have this notion of question groups. And each of the different groups have either a video or an image specifically associated with that group. You have translations and total geek moment. I love our translation tool. What you do is you download the actual file containing the information and then, so you can add a translation, uh, but this is one of my, I just love geek. I love our translation tool. You just literally download, uh, the, uh, you download all the questions into a CSV file, then you upload it. It's so easy, I love it. Uh, and then you publish it. And there are many different ways for you to publish the games. And we'll go into more detail on each of these tabs in just a minute. So starting with the game information page. So the first thing that you do when you are building out the recall game is you have to select the specific game type, right? And uh, there are 10 different game types. Uh, let's see, there are 10 different game types. And for those of you that, uh, I'll show a little bit later, I, I must've closed the, the tab that had all of the, oh no, here they are. Here are the 10 different game types. 
We have Jeopardy, we have Wheel of Fortune. These are the official games licensed from Sony. We have Match, which is a bejeweled type of game. We have Trivia. We have Word and Sentence Scramble. I love this game. We have Scenarios, which is a branching dialogue maker. Game of Five with Points. We have a detective game, which is all about synthesizing information and being able to pull from sim uh, 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 you're a detective and you have all of this evidence and you have to bring it forth and match evidence to all of the, uh, um, uh, I forget, forgive me, I'll, I'll come back to that. We have a sorted game. We have the recall game, of course, and we have a jump game, which is tons of fun. So, okay. So those are the 10 game types and back here. So you pick, you pick your game type, you name the game and URL will automatically be generated for you. You pick your default language and we have, I think we're up to 20 different languages and you can set them a default language. Um, if you wanted just to be in German, that's great. So you could do, um, but you can have multiple languages as well by using the translation tab, but you start off with the default language and I started off with English. Of course, we even have the UK for the person that is joining us over the pond. You have the ability to add tags. So if you wanted to add a tag for this one, you might type in health, right? And that would be a tag for what you can then use to search when you're looking at all of the games that you've built in your specific library. I don't need any tag. Um, so many, many of the games are used not just as a way of providing a practice playground where the information that you're bringing forth to your employees is practiced and really where that's where the learning comes in is through working and struggling with the pro the, the active learning that you're doing in games really driving home that information into the long-term memory but you can also use this as a knowledge check and set a specific percentage of questions that have to be answered correctly in order to pass that particular course and this information can be this pass fail can be actually sent via our SCORM package over to your LMS. I have it set to zero since it was just for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, you can limit the number of sessions a player can play. This was an interesting request. You would think that I want my employees to play this game to learn about CPR. And I, want, I don't want to have a limit on the number of times they play it because the more they play it, the more they'll learn. And that's very true, and, but, but in practice, we've had some games that are just so much fun to play that the, uh, the, the game creators will actually wanna say, no, I only want them to be able to play twice. And so you can go ahead and limit it there. You can set a start and end date for the game. So if you're running a, an educational competition, right? I have a training competition, it's gonna be between June 26th and June 30th. So you can set and start actual dates for when the games will be live. And that could be a nice clean concert with perhaps a training campaign that you're doing. So if you want, you can randomize the group questions. I did not want to randomize them. I had a very specific order in mind that I wanted you all to play the game. So I did not turn that on. I left that as no. The tutorial, you all saw the tutorial. You can have that on. You don't need to have it on. Then you have the opportunity to have a learn more URL. At the very end of the game, after you finish the whole thing, you saw a button that allows you to actually direct your learners anywhere you wanted. So I had that set to mental matrix and at that specific URL. Then context is king. And I wanted, and, and I always recommend this to our subscribers, is to say, let your team members know why they're playing this game. So this was that opening screen and that had the title and this is how it read. So it's nice to be able to have all the formatting that you wanna do here and then be able to see how it's gonna look. Next is user registration. So you can gate how you have your employees come to the game. I had no authorization, I wanted you all to play it but you can have an authorized player list. So you can upload the CSV file and saying, hey, these thousand employees can play this game. And when they come to the page, they type in their email address and it will check against that list. 
kind of like a, a list at a super disco, right? I'm on the list. So you have that, or you can use single sign-on. And so many, I'd say at this point, maybe the majority of our subscribers are using single sign-on for security and very much for ease of use so that your employees can go, if you want, straight from the LMS into and playing the game. So, and leaderboard, uh, so require user registration before playing. I had that turned off. If you want, if you're not using perhaps SSO or a user list, or you can use our built-in registration system that allows you to set the registration information required of your employees when they're coming to play the game. And you then have the opportunity to say what you want to show on the leaderboard, and you can even create custom fields. So I have that turned off. So All right, Richard, and then before we go to the next section, yep. there is a question about uh, languages. Jeanette yes. wants to know how many multiple languages can you apply per game? It is my understanding that there's no limit. It's just up to the 20 that we have translated right now. And, and just to make sure that we're on the same page. And hey, Jen, let's let's do this though. No one's ever asked me that question before. <laughs> so <laughs> so let, let's do this. No, so let's do this. Can, can I ask a favor? Do you mind just taking a note of that? And, yeah. and we'll, we'll respond to this group with the answer to that question, because it's a great one. Um, and with respect to translations, I want to make sure that I've done a good job of communicating the way that works is we translate all of the in-game common terms that are in the game itself, right? In the template, any translations of the game content that you're creating, you need to go and have translated and then uploaded back into the game. So just want to make sure there's kind of that division of labor when it comes to the translations. Um, leaderboard, uh, you have the opportunity, if you don't want to have the leaderboard on, uh, to actually turn that off. I, I, so there are so many features here and so much functionality in the training arcade that you're like, you scratch your head and go, why would anyone not want to have a leaderboard? But, but many of these, many of the functionality comes from subscribers going, well, I have this kind of a specific use case. We really don't want to have a leaderboard on the game over screen. Like, all right. And then you end up evolving the platform based on the actual needs of our subscribers versus what you know Richard might theoretically think is is valuable. But we have the opportunity to turn it off. I had it on so y'all could see how you did in comparison to other people. So uh, next thing is we have different themes, and you have the opportunity to select from different themes. Um, we get questions about, hey, can I create my own theme? And can I have you create a theme for us? So we can work to get, we can work with you. We have custom services if you wanted to have a particular theme added to your account, maybe you know, for a particular QSR, for example. And yes, we can add themes to, you can't do it yourself. You work with our team and then we add them. Uh, we can create them for you, and um, and sometimes we'll even for those that are particularly have great graphic design departments, uh, help them uh, understand how to create them. Background track music. I actually decided not to have any music, uh, but there are four adorable different kinds of uh, soundtracks that you could have. You have the ability to upload your images if you uh, you have different kind. Sorry, blah, blah, blah. slow down. Company logo. You can upload your company logo or an image. What I did was, as I'm just going to go to the, uh, what was it? Um, you think I would have that open? I did have it open. Here it is. Here, so this is the, the folder that I used when creating this game. And this was the logo that you saw. Right, it was your company logo. So the way that works is you literally go here to browse, and then you go to the. Uh, I'm sorry. I uh, okay. You get to see me flounder, Jen. I'm so sorry. No, it's uh, okay. I'm always amazed with how organized your folders are. Well, but I can't. I can't find. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Build a recall game. I'm an idiot. So then here, literally, I know, right? I'm so worried. So here, right? So I went here and I selected it and that literally uploads that image of the logo. So there you go. Uh, the game title, 
you can have that be an image, text. You don't have to have anything. I had it text as build a recall game seminar, but you can change that to demo, right? And as soon as I save that, as soon as I save it, if you go back to that logo, then it, um, it actually changes it in real time, which is cool, but you get to see it also, which I really like. The background, you can upload an image of the background if you want. So, you know, you can have your graphic designers add a different image and it'll replace the origami mountain background. I happen to like it, so I left it as the default. For those of you that wish, you have, if your privacy departments want you to add your own privacy policy to the, uh, to the actual entry point, for the registration of the game, you can actually add your own um, privacy policy and you can even add a consent checkbox if you wanted to. So our German friend that has joined us, if you're, if you have, you know, Germany has some of the strictest privacy policy laws in the world. So if you, if your uh, privacy department insists on getting specific consent from each of your players, your learners you could even do that. So before I move off of the general information page, does anybody have any questions? Uh, we do. Um, some are related to building the actual game, um, and it might be good to wait until you're actually there. Um, mm -hmm. But one is, Melanie says, you were mentioning SCORM. Yes. Is my understanding accurate? The game has to be accessed through the arcade. The SCORM is only to communicate a score to the LMS. So mostly. So let me answer the question. So once you finish the game, you have very you have a, a, a bevy of ways of distributing the game to your employees. One of them is as a SCORM package. Mm -hmm. And there are three different kinds of SCORM packages that you download. You download these SCORM packages and then you actually upload them to your learning management system. We have the 2004, 1.2, and we even have a special SCORM package for SAP success factors because it's a little bit um, unique, you'll say. So, and, and what, what, once you actually have it uploaded to your, to your actual LMS for the course that you want to uh, have the game played by your, your learners, the, the, the game, the SCORM package itself, it lives inside of your LMS. However, once your employee begins to play the game, they are playing the actual game itself on our AWS servers. So the game, the data and the game is resides on our servers. Once the game is finished, the information then is transmitted via the SCORM package back to your LMS. So on your LMS, you will have the general information about how did Jen do in the game? Did, did she complete the game? How long did she play the game? Did she have that, you know, did she, did she pass the game if you had that completion percentage on? But so the LMS, what I, I call the manifest, the LMS manifest was sits specifically in your LMS on your servers. The game is played on, and, and the data, your, your game information, what we call the subscriber content resides on our servers as does the detailed information that we saw earlier on the analytics, as well as the personal data for your employees. So maybe it's first name, last name, email address, and really that's it. And if it's an SSO package, if you're using SSO, it can even just be a unique identifier for the employee. So we have very, very minimal personal data that we hold on our servers. And then we have this detailed information about how they did, and of course, the game content itself. So we'll come back to this tab a little bit later and look at this in more information. But before I move off of that, Melanie, did we address your question? Yes, it looks like Melanie is happy. Um, but okay. in regards to also publishing, yes. uh, she said, can you embed the game into the training? I'm assuming she means like storyline or lector or articulate. Mm -hmm. And how would that work? And how would it work with the end results of your overall training score on that course? Okay. So the answer is yes. And the way you embed the game into a, a, a course itself is as a web object. And for Lectora, which is the authoring tool that is part of uh, ELB Learning's 
full spectrum of products. We've actually customized it so that we're able to pass along a lot of information back to your LMS. So it's, it's definitely been optimized for Lectora. For Storyline and for um, Captivate, um, I'm going to have to get back to you. I apologize. I don't know what information goes back to the LMS. So let's put our finger on that checker and Melanie, we'll get back to you on that as well. We'll send out an email to the entire group to know what happens when you embed the game as a web object in Storyline, Captivate, and how does that information on completion then go back to the LMS for that particular learner? I, I'm 85% I'm certain that when you embed the web object into the course, it follows the course itself and you're able to get some specific information for that learner with that course. But because I'm only 85% sure, and that's a B, I wanna come back and, and address that and get and get precise information for everyone on this webinar. So if that's okay, Melanie will, I think, but I want to make sure that we're we're certain about that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? We're going to come back to this tab. Any other questions so far about the game info tab? Uh, By the way, go ahead. No, I, there uh, there are a couple of questions about translations. We will. Um, a few people are asking for a list of companies that we trust for translation services, okay. which we could certainly provide. Um, and then okay. Michelle, I, I'm so sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, said um, translation steps go from import the file as an XLIF, I'm not familiar with that, um, to get translated and exported back into the course. Wondering what the steps are. Are they the same for the games or different? You did mention a little bit about how the translation actually works, but maybe if right. you could just run through that one more time. Yeah, so, okay. So if I'm gonna add a translation, let's see. Let's see, um, I've never done it in, so, okay. So there are a couple ways of, of doing translation. So let's say I wanted to add Spanish. Um, so what you would do is you have the, the original and you have the opportunity to have side by side if you wanted to literally for each of the questions right so i've got the english here which is the default and then i answer and then i put in the translation so you can literally see it side by side so love this and this works really really well if you only have say you know one really one or two different languages but this is I thought a brilliant way of being able to um, add translations, but it's it's just I love it. But I think there there is it's not my favorite way in terms of multiple languages. So, um, hmm. And we will get back to you about the multiple languages. I've never yep. done this. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, it's great to have these because might need questions. to make some games. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so let's see, I don't remember the name of the person that asked the question, but Michelle, um, Michelle. Hi, hi, Michelle. So um, by the way, it doesn't really matter, but um, I am, I'm the backup. I'm the backup guy for doing this. <laughs> so I kind of came in at the last second. Um, I have to get back to you because it's been about uh, a year since I've built a recall game. And I'm embarrassed to say, I thought that there was a button here that said download CSV file. And I bet you, I bet you it's just user error. Huh. We'll get, I'll get back, we'll get back to you on the specific steps for doing it in bulk by downloading. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, this is what happens when you don't use the system for a year. Things change a lot, a lot. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot of changes. yeah, which is great. But then, you know, I, I so my apologies, my apologies. I, I don't know where the bulk download is. So, but we'll get back to you on that. We've got three action items already. So, and a lot to do after this. So, okay. 
So coming back to the questions. So we, so we ready to move to the, oh, but before we do it, one lovely feature, copy game, lots and lots of people want to create a base game and be able to quickly copy it, which is super easy, literally copy it. It copies the whole game, then you can change the name of the game and maybe tweak a few things. So super feature, love it. And Richard, even, even in, mm -hmm. Julie, our customer success manager is on this webinar. And she, oh, hi, Julie. Tell me how I failed. And she is the one just to also answer your question, Michelle, who will be, who onboards anybody who becomes a subscriber. So you will get full onboarding and she knows the product. So she <laughs> the download template shows up once you pick a language. Thank you, oh. Julie. Oh, thank goodness. Let's pick uh, Portuguese. Eu falo um pouquinho de português. Okay. All right. So, Julie, where's the template? Click the download button. Where? Underneath Portuguese, maybe. Oh, you already did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I picked Portuguese. I'm going to delete the language. Hmm. Julie, so it's, it's Julie, 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 <laughs> put her on the spot. All right, well, we'll continue and, and Julie can tell me what I've done wrong. All right, let's get to the questions. So as I mentioned earlier, there are question groups and each question group is centered around either an image or a video. You have the ability to first of all, just to name the overall group to, and I do that in order to be able to keep my head about me. You can actually set the total time that you wanna have for that group itself. I set it at 180 seconds and then comes the magic. So for this particular group, we had this video. You guys remember seeing this video, right? Can you hear when you were playing it? You know, there were cards, right? There were cards that you heard the shuffling of cards, right? Um, I'm actually, you, you couldn't hear that, right, Jen? I didn't have, I didn't turn on the, the sound. Um, when I played it yesterday, I could hear it. Right, hang on, I'm going to stop sharing for just a second and then start sharing. Just give me a second. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to share sound. Oh, they're saying that they could hear it. Oh, all right. Well. Oh, let's go back. Okay. So this was, so y'all remember hearing this, right? Add up the hand. So where did this come from? So again, I just need to remind everybody that I am an absolute neophyte when it comes to using all kinds of creative tools. Like give me, give me Microsoft Paint and I want to show you how I built it. So this was, this is my little folder. And this is the PowerPoint that I created. And literally what I did was I you know, found a deck of cards, uh, images online, and I laid this out one card at a time and I rotated it, I added sound. You can see here's the sound, that sound effect, right? And I created this one slide using animations here, again, in PowerPoint. And then I just saved it out as an MP4, right? And the MP4 is, here, here's the MP4, right? And this is literally the, you know, the MP4. And I know some of you out there are probably doing that, you know, the V8 palm to the head going, oh my gosh, I can't believe you use PowerPoint to do that, Richard. Well, I, quite frankly, it's just, you know, I use the tools that make it easier for me and to be able to do it fast. And so, and that's one of the, the you know, the whole raison d'etre of the training arcade is to enable you, each of you to be able to make great looking, fun, interactive games much, much, much more quickly than you could with other tools. So for me, I, I use PowerPoint. I know it's kind of almost ridiculous that I did it, but it was very effective and very fast. So then, okay. So now that's, this is the first group and this is the question in the group. And you'll remember the question was, it was a multiple choice. You select from these different, four different kinds of, of question types, multiple choice, multi-select. You guys remember the question on 
you know, enter all that, you know, select all that applied text input, as you remember, and you even have the ability to have a poll, which is cool because there's no right answer in the poll. I just wanted to get feedback from my learners on a particular topic. So there's no right or wrong answer in a poll. I love having that, oh, that uh, question type as part of it. And what did we do, right? So we, we uploaded, just to remind you, we uploaded this image to the group, right? It was uploaded to the group. And then you dive into the questions themselves. One of the super duper cool features is the ability to have the actual question be in audio. So if you wanted to, for those of you out there that have customer service representatives, you could have the audio be an irate customer. I demand to speak to the boss, right? And so you can actually have the questions itself be audio if you wished. So I love that. So here was the question, you guys remember, right? In order from A to B to C, what do the numbers add up? And then you needed to select, and there was the correct answer. And I have random answers off. I wanted to have them off on purpose. You can randomize them if you want. Randomization's awesome, so you can have replayability. There's my feedback for those you got it right and those you got it wrong. And one of the things that I like doing in all of my feedback responses is being able to add a little bit of additional information. Well done, well done, Jen. By the way, player C should not have hit on that last card. So very much driving home the fact that, yeah, you got it right, nice positive reinforcement. It's the opportunity, that very moment in time when Jen's brain is getting feedback, she's open to feedback for us to introduce yet another little kernel of knowledge that Jen might need in order to do her job even better. So point of fact, by the way, this game was a demo that I created for a casino and they needed a game that enabled them to qualify. They had tons and tons of candidates for their blackjack and, and 21 table and poker tables. So they, they needed a way to better um, literally uh, screen candidates. So they had two goals in mind. One is we want to screen candidates and need to be able to do math really, really fast. And they also need to know the, know the rules of blackjack. So this was a demo that I created for them and they loved it and they actually used it as part of their recruiting and also um, for continuing to reinforce mental math, which I thought was just fantastic. I loved it. So, and there are likely tons and tons of similar applications for the folks who are out there. Uh, watching this webinar now. So that was the first group. The second group also related to that demo that I created for the casino. And the reason I wanted you to have a second question about blackjack, because I, this one really was about understanding rules. The first one was about just, you know, how good are you at math? But this one is, I need you to know the rules of a particular part of your job. And I need you to decide based on the rules of what you need to know what any outcomes should be. So while the same overall functionality, I had a very different performance goal in mind. And I wanted to very much provide you with that. And here was the question, right? And just, I, right, here you go, right? Here's the correct answer. There was that feedback. So this next group was that health safety image. And so we have yep. two Two questions in regards to this one. Yeah, oh, um, to this one, to this yeah. one. Yeah, one okay. said, uh, Danielle said, does the open response have the ability to take multiple answers? For example, potholder versus love being the correct answer for the restaurant question. Yeah. And adding to that, if there are multiple answers to those open response questions, how do the analytics tool analyze the responses? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Um, so let's, by the way, before I forget, you have the ability for each question to have its own timer. So I set 60 seconds and obviously the faster the, or the, the, the shorter the amount of seconds, the faster that, you know, the time bar on the bottom uh, you know, moves to the left. So, um, okay, so here. So this one was multiple kinds of responses, right? So, um, so it was a text the, input. It was text input, right? So with gloves, glove, I, you know, all kinds of dis, 
different spelling for glove. Um, but you know, I could have written, uh, you know, mitten. Could have added, um, whatever baseball. Holder, yeah. Right. But the cool thing is, we have a system of wild cards where it doesn't need to be exact. It can can contain. So if you said, I don't want, I don't care how well they spell. It, well, so long as they have the letters G and L in it, right, and it, it contains G and L, that had been fine, right? So you can have contains, starts with, ends with, inside, all kinds of different permutations on the wild cards for how that response is accepted. Then uh, let's go to your answer, the second part of that question. Uh, the analytics are up here. Where are my analytics? Oh, this bar always gets in my way. Um, let's go to the analytics for this game. Right, above um, the leaderboard, yeah. So, okay, so the question was about that specific question. And... Right there, yeah. What has the chef forgotten to wear, right? So, um, you guys are asking really good questions, by the way. So under the correct, it would have, and we can download, we can actually download all of the analytics and look at it in more detail, but it would have put it into the correct, it would have put that, if, if mittens was a correct response, it would have put it here into the correct. Um, but I would love to, if time permits, I'll download the actual, this allows us to download the analytics and it's gonna open them up into Excel. And so, all right, so the questions. Oh, look at where so, they Yeah, yeah, so, okay. So if I was better at Excel, I'd be able to tell you, let's see, so, let's see, so. So it's uh, Keep right, scrolling. Uh, Okay, who is the chef? Yeah. So right, so they wrote glove, glove. So nobody, let's see. Uh, hat, so they wrote hat here, right? Gloves was correct, see? Gloves was accepted as correct, right? Anybody glove? No one, no one wrote anything. So you have that ability. So if you had, if someone wrote mitt, someone wrote mitt, that's funny. Um, and that was wrong, right? So, but any of the ones that I allowed, glove, here, see glove, right? Glove, correct. So does that answer that person's question? I'm gonna take it as a yes. All right. Um, um, well, then oh, I'm not going to pronounce his name correctly, so I'm not going to try. Does the analytics tool able to show the collected response of different permutations, for example, glove, mint, et cetera, visually like a word cloud? Because um, we're looking at it was by player. Yeah. Um, not, out of, no, not right now. Um, but if I was, so yes, I could sort this. So it doesn't in the system, but if anybody actually, if I knew, if I knew how to create um, a pivot table, it would take me three seconds. I've, I've learned how to make a pivot table like six times in my life. And I always forget. So a pivot table would allow us to very quickly, yeah. you know, be able to look at that. But that notion of, okay, I want to look at it like a word cloud is a great idea. It's not right now part of the system, but certainly something that we should add to the list. I love it, but you very quickly should be able to take this creative pivot table and only look. Well, I mean, really shouldn't even. I could probably do a sort right now and just filter by you know this particular question and get you, you know, how would people respond? But it would be something that I would look at, look at outside the system, it's not currently inside. So, um, last. Thank you for the questions, everybody. So this last group was the video and the CPR. Uh, those were the three questions that 
we, you know, I've randomized the answers on some of these, but basically the same kind of, of steps, right? Create your group, upload the video or an image, create your specific, your specific questions regarding that group image or that group video. And just that's how you build the game out. You saw when playing that we've added in some nice features such as giving people clues. But when you, you use one of the clues that were a part of that, it costs you points. The whole notion is create a, a, a sense of urgency through a fun, active kind of learning. And oh, my goodness, we have five minutes left. I wanted to show you the publish. I was starting to recap uh, real quick. So you have the ability if you wanted to, once you create the game and you save the game, you can copy the specific URL just like I did, right? And I put it into the chat. So that's great. You can create, uh, download the SCORM package. You can actually embed the game like you would a YouTube video into your internet. So you have the ability to set, indicate the exact width and height and then embed the game. And uh, we actually have an upcoming new feature with Docebo that we're gonna be launching in the, the coming weeks. So, all right, with that, as we, round home we owe some we owe we owe this group some some answers uh we'll get those to you in the coming days if not even sooner and then uh, let me just open up the the uh, floor for any last questions um okay let's see is there a function to prevent answers until a video completes or to not start the timer until the video completes uh, so uh, Jen, uh, you're not asking that question. Jen asked me that exact question over the weekend. So uh, right now the answer is no. It was it was a game design specifically intended to say, if you don't want to wait for the whole video to play, it's up to you. Take the take, you know, take that kind of chance and go, no, I think I have enough information to answer it now, which in and of itself is great. So we purposely allowed people to click through as fast as they want. Uh, not to say that we can't add the functionality that would require it. Some of our games like the scenario game actually allows you as the game creator to select that as a function, which says, do not allow the person to actually begin to answer that question until they've watched the whole video. So that functionality exists in other game types. It was purposely not included in recall. Not to say that we can't add that to the evolution of the platform in, in the coming weeks and months. Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, a lot of people are asking about free trials. So we do offer a 14 day free trial um, and that can be something that you can schedule um, on our website, the Training Arcade website. Um, we also had a few questions about Actually, just one specifically about um, how ELB and the Training Arcade are related. Hmm. I don't know if you want awesome. to talk for a minute. I will. I will. Just real quick, that URL that you had that you everyone clicked on and played. Feel free to share that URL with other colleagues. Uh, the game will stay live, and so just no need to uh, no, no need to you know you can share it. Share as well. So uh, ELB Learning purchased the game agency. Uh, a little over two years ago, we've been part of the ELB family. And so the Training Arcade is one of eight products in our product suite that we offer for the creation of, uh, of learning, of better learning experiences for your employees. And we have many integrations that we have between the Training Arcade and other ELB products, such as Lectora and the Rockstar Learning Platform, and certainly happy to have one of our account executives show you and talk to you about more of those integrations. So we are one of eight of the products within our suite of products and services. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I think I answered most of Michelle's questions. Um, we talked about embedding the game into an e-learning authoring tool, which we certainly can. You can download it as a SCORM package. We have various versions available. 
Um, we will get back to you about translations. I apologize that we didn't have that information handy. Um, we also owe the information on how, in, when you embed the game into uh, storyline or captivate, what information and how does that inf how does that information flow back to the to the LMS for that specific learner? It's one of the other follow up questions that we have. Okay. Oh, Julie says circling circling back on the translations function. Some of our ten game types have the option for entering your translated information via download and upload of template, CSV or XLS file. The recall game type has the translation option, but it does not have the template upload feature. Ah, so it's that side-by-side -side feature that I showed you. Yep. So, it's all right, so it wasn't me. It's just that we haven't added, that you have not yet added the, the template functionality to the recall game. So, and I'm certain that we will. <laughs> 